I, William Arthur Philip Louis, take thee, Catherine Elizabeth, to my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. The entire world is watching. Something like two billion people watch this more than any event in history. We saw a bride who's going to be very happy in this royal family. He chose St Andrews University, and so, by chance, did Kate Middleton. And that, of course, where they were both first-year students, freshers, that's where they met. And if there is one word which sums up their relationship, I think it's one of respect. Since those early days, their romance has blossomed into a modern-day fairy tale that has been documented and watched across the world. Never before have members of the royal family been seen in the same way as we view celebrities, but Kate and William are a very good-looking pair, and because they come across so down-to-earth, I think we're viewing them in a completely different way. Their relationship has grown, strengthened and transformed into an inseparable marriage and a true partnership. We've been talking about, about um, marriage for a while, so it wasn't a massively big surprise, but uh, I took her up somewhere nice in, uh, in Kenya and, uh, and proposed. It's very romantic. There's a true romantic in that. There is. <laughs> and they are now one of the world's most respected and famous couples. Their relationship grew out of cold winter nights spent in a university digs, having spaghetti bolognese and talking about anything other than being a prince or princess. Come with us as we discover their uniquely romantic story. We take you back through the couple's early years together and we follow their journey to becoming the golden couple they are today. At the time of the announcement of their engagement, Prince William and Kate Middleton were often featured in newspapers and gossip magazines, more so than any other royal couple. Prince William has always been known for his humble and down-to-earth manner, and it is these traits that make him, perhaps, the nation's favorite prince, exemplified by his decision to visit Chile on a charitable teaching quest during his gap year. Um, basically, um, I wanted to do something constructive um, for my gap year rather than, um, I mean, uh, I could do quite a lot of work, but I thought this was a, a bit more of a way of um, making, uh, trying to help people out and uh, meet a whole range of other different people from um, different countries and at the same time uh, helping people um, in remote areas of Chile. William, you're going to be quite a long way away. How much do you think you're going to miss your dad and your brother? Um, I'll probably miss them. Quite a bit. <laughs> no, I miss him. I miss him a lot. But um, as it's only ten weeks, and I'll probably be um, once I get out there, I'll be quite committed. So I'll, I'm going to dig in and make the most of what I'm doing out there, and just get on with what I'm going to do, and then come back just before Christmas. He may have been born to a life of privilege, but in Patagonia, no task is too humble for this future king. Cleaning the toilet floor was a weekly task for him during his rally expedition to Chile. These latest pictures also show Prince William preparing to cook porridge for breakfast. He admitted it wasn't a culinary triumph. But the prince was an instant hit with children at a nursery in the village of Tortel, where he's been based for the last two months. He says he chose to come to this remote land because he'd never been to South America, and the Chileans' friends said were very hospitable. It's hardly been a holiday, though. The young prince doing a stint as a lumberjack in which not everything went exactly to plan. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> William shrugged off the setback. And he walks out of this competition, head held low, not very happy. <laughs> the prince has also had to do the washing with mixed results. Oh. I can still smell it, he said. He's insisted he's treated like anyone else on this expedition. That's meant sleeping in an old nursery classroom with 15 others and chopping up the firewood for heating and cooking. My name is Will. I am a wombat. And then you try and make a noise that a wombat makes. Giving lessons at the village school, he's shown that he's a natural with children. It's evident that he's inherited his mother's easy manner as well as her looks. 
How am I going to remember that? He's emerged from his gap year trip more confident and more relaxed than ever before. <laughs> Have you any thoughts for the future when you come back? Um, I'm basically, I just want to enjoy my gap year and, and hope that goes well. And um, so far, thanks to all of you, it has gone very well. And um, basically, I'm looking forward to going to university um, next year. What well, one of the great things about my job has been that I have, over the last few years, had an opportunity to meet William several times. And um, when, I, when I first met him, um, he was just in his last year at university. And really, none of us had seen Prince William, apart from a shy guy, tragically, with his head bowed behind his mother's coffin at her funeral. Really, he was an unknown entity. And, and what struck me then, and still strikes me about Prince William, is that he is incredibly media savvy. He is shy. He's not, he's not big and flashy. Prince William has got such a solid kind of grounding, really, in the eyes of the press. I think the press and the public really admire him. They think he's very grown up. He had to grow up very quickly, particularly after the death of his mother. He's definitely the mature one uh, between him and his brother, Prince Harry. And I just think there's a great deal of admiration and respect for him, yet people feel that there's a connection with him. It's not like he's one of those members of the royal family who seems so distant from the public and so far removed. He genuinely seems like he really cares about the public. He is very, very normal, very, very um, pleasant person to speak to. Um, and he, he, he knows just, I think, like his mother, Princess Diana, he knows how to put people at ease very quickly and he'll, he'll look people in the eye and he'll use their Christian names a lot. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's at pains really to kind of connect with people on a one-to-one -one level, which, um, again, as a prince, you know, that, that speaks volumes. Since their first meeting in 2001, Prince William and Kate Middleton's relationship has grown ever stronger. Despite having come from very different backgrounds, their bond as a couple seems to be unbreakable. I think probably one of the reasons that Kate and William found they had such a bond together, particularly on his side, was the fact that they had kind of quite different, I mean, very different backgrounds. He obviously had had, his parents had gone through a divorce and then he had the tragic death of his mother, whereas she was quite an ordinary girl by all accounts. She lived a quite idyllic life, her family, got on very well, it was all very harmonious. And it was almost like she brought something new to the table for William. And so he found a bit of solace in the fact that she had such a tightly knit family. He really enjoyed going to visit her parents at weekends. And I think that probably gave him something that he didn't have from his own family. With Kate Middleton now dating a prince and rapidly becoming one of the world's most famous faces, the paparazzi and the tabloids had a decision to make. Would they respect her privacy or give her the same intrusive treatment as Princess Diana, which ended in tragic circumstances? William and Harry are acutely aware of where things went wrong in the press in their early life. And there's an argument, quite a strong one, to suggest that um, the wheels so spectacularly fell off Diana's life and her public image and how she was um, portrayed in the press and how she was pursued by journalists and photographers that contributed to, to her tragic demise. And I think what you have with William is a guy who has learned lessons. And there's really nothing any of those grey-suited men from Clarence House could genuinely tell William that he doesn't already know about the press. And he understands the media. He understands that as a royal, you're never going to be elected. But that doesn't mean that public opinion isn't incredibly important. Um, to you and your longevity. And William, I think, really understands that. He gets it. Um, he is very, very open and willing to, to forge relationships with the press. Um, <clears throat> but he wants it on his terms, and he does not want a repeat of what we saw with Princess Diana. Prince William and Kate Middleton's romance is a story that has fascinated the public. 
deeper to truly understand their unique and magical journey, we have to go back to where it all started. Catherine Elizabeth Middleton was born on the 9th of January 1982 in Reading, Berkshire. She grew up in what was considered to be a perfect family environment alongside her brother, James, and her sister, Pippa. Her father, who was um, a pilot and worked for British Airways with the rank of captain, and her mother, who was a flight attendant, was quite clearly an ambitious young girl. Growing up in Southall, which is not a salubrious suburb, where it's more or less like living under the flight path at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York. She could look up when she was a child and see the big glamorous airplanes landing. And she thought to herself, I'm going to be a flight attendant. And she ended up as a flight attendant. And she ended up meeting a pilot. And she ended up marrying him. And there's definitely ambition in the family of the best sort, a bootstrap operation. But they were not poor. They never were. He was always on a pilot's salary. But they set out to make their own company, party pieces. They saw a niche in the market. And what they did is what good parents have always done. They've invested in education. It cost them a lot of money. They sent all of their three children to good schools. Uh, in the case of Kate, to Marlborough School, which is one of the top public schools, which means private in British terms, schools, where she did quite well. And I think she had one of those uh, childhoods where there was a lot of happiness, there was a lot of family feeling. And I think that that is what attracted William to her. As Kate's early years were proving to be idyllic, Prince William's childhood was plagued by tragedy. William Arthur Philip Louis, the first child of the Prince and Princess of Wales, was born at St Mary's Hospital, London, on the 21st of June, 1982. His arrival triggered front-page headlines around the world, and a future King of England was soon presented to an adoring public. William's brother, Harry, was born on the 15th of September, 1984. I remember saying to Princess Diana on one occasion when her son was getting taller and taller, I said, you've bred some height into the royal family. And she said, yes, and good looks, and good looks. And what she was talking about was the introduction of her family, the Spencers, into a very tight royal gene pool. And the result was two good-looking sons. The Prince and Princess of Wales are to separate. Buckingham Palace said the decision was reached amicably and the couple have no plans for divorce. The palace said no third parties are involved. We have reports from Paris that Diana, Princess of Wales, has been killed in a car accident and that her partner, Dodi Fired, has also been killed. They were apparently being pursued by paparazzi on two motorcycles. William was just 15 years old and his brother Harry only 12 when their mother was tragically killed in a car accident in Paris. There was worldwide sympathy for the two brothers as their grief was played out so publicly in the media spotlight. Kate Middleton's school life at Marlborough got off to a tough start as she was bullied on a regular basis. And when she got there, she wasn't particularly popular at the beginning. The boys apparently in the refectory, in the dining hall, as the young girls would come in, they would hold up their paper napkins with scores on for the girls saying whether they were attractive or they were not attractive. And when she first arrived, rather thin, rather nervous, rather timorous, you know, they held up one or zero or two. Not very nice for a young girl, but she didn't complain, she didn't cry, she didn't 
asked to be taken out of the school. She got on with it and she became successful. But Kate's strength of character shone through as she started to develop a more confident personality and ultimately became more popular amongst her peers. And by dint of applying herself, became popular. It wasn't given to her on a plate. And as she filled out a little bit and she got some color in her cheeks and she became more assured, uh, the attraction grew and she was a very popular person. The Kate Middleton that we see now is very different from a very shy, quite asthmatic um, schoolgirl who frankly wasn't sort of everyone's best friend. She wasn't the girl that everyone wanted to necessarily be seen with. She was sporty, she played a lot of sports, and generally they haven't been able to find anything bad. I, mean, I think what's remarkable about Kate Middleton is that there has been so little that's come out of her past that's scandalous or uh, some incident where she was rude to somebody or bullying. I mean, there's nothing. As one would expect, Prince William was sent to a very prestigious school, Eton College, close to Windsor Castle, his grandmother's favorite home. William's education was at Eton College. Eton College is probably the leading public school in England and it's very traditional. William's mother, Diana Princess of Wales, insisted that he went to Eton, as did her father and her younger brother Charles. Prince Charles acceded to this. Uh, he went to Gordonston, where he was thoroughly miserable and cried almost every time he had to go back to, to school, even as a teenager. And he allowed his sons both to go to a very elitist school. It's very elite, it's very expensive, it's very posh, if you will, but it also has a degree of freedom for the pupils. They are encouraged to be self-confident and to find themselves. And when William came there after being at Ludgrove, the prep school, and he was there and he did very well, Eton was right for, for William. He enjoyed the sports, he enjoyed swimming, water polo. He loved playing football, soccer. After finishing at Eton, the decision was left to William as to where he would complete his education. He chose St Andrews University in Scotland, and it was here that he would meet Kate Middleton. Prince William's university life did not get off to the greatest start, and he considered dropping out after only the first year, but he persevered. Initially, Prince William and Kate were just friends, but the prince's perception changed after Kate took a confident stroll along a catwalk at a charity fashion show. He took the initiative and their relationship moved to the next level. Does it occur to you that it's somewhat inappropriate for a future Queen of England to have been photographed in? <laughs> it does, but um, back then I'm sure she had her reasons for wearing it. I, we still don't know whether she was put in it or if she chose to wear it, which I like to think she chose to put it on because she thought it might be a bit of a showstopper. It's a part of history now. Legend has it that that's what finally nailed William um, and made him decide that uh, he was a young girl worth some more attention. One thing that most definitely helped William and Kate's relationship to blossom naturally was the decision made by the British tabloids to give William and Harry complete privacy during their further education and allowing them as near a normal life as possible during that vital part of their lives. They would spend time walking in the park, not fearing a photographer in a hedge. Um, and while pictures were taken, newspapers agreed under this special agreement that was made after Diana's death not to actually publish those pictures. So there was no market. You cannot underestimate how important that has been in their relationship. William met Kate at university when he was in that period of being left alone by the media, out of the public light. Having lived in Hall, they were then bold enough with two friends, another boy and girl, to actually take a farmhouse outside the small town of St Andrews, where they lived in this sort of little menage, this uh, family-type relationship for a couple of years. And obviously they got to know each other quite well, probably very well, uh, at this time. And I think this is where the bedrock of their relationship was established. Um, they were very close, but at all times they were highly discreet. They were almost never seen together. 
they were, even with their friends, they didn't allow any gossip to start. People speculated, but there was nothing uh, definite which proved that they were an item. And I think the fact that she was discreet and that she wasn't blabbering on about um, her, her love or her, her, her regard for Prince William, I think that stood her in good stead. Kate Middleton's relationship with Prince William was first revealed to the British public when William decided to take her on a family skiing trip to Klosters in Switzerland, a favourite haunt of his father's for skiing holidays. So, Prince William, romance clearly in the air here. Uh, could there be another wedding perhaps on the card sometime soon? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> in April 2005, William took the decision to take Kate Middleton, his new girlfriend as she was then, on the skiing holiday with her father and with Prince Charles in Klosters in Switzerland. Now, of course, the fact that two years in a row, suddenly this pretty brunette that we didn't know anything about was being brought on holiday again with, with Prince Charles and William, that caused massive um, uh, media attention. It was a frenzy, frankly. And just about every skiing photographer across the Alps rushed to Klosters to try and get pictures of Kate. Um, on that holiday, I met up with William and Kate and Harry in a nightclub um, in Klosters quite, quite late at night. But we had a long chat. Um, and William wanted to know, quite bizarrely really, I thought it would be obvious, but he wanted to know why all of a sudden there was just this enormous media storm around his little skiing holiday in the Alps. And of course I found myself in a position where I was having to explain to William, who I'm sure knows better than I did, that we were naturally interested in a girl that frankly can be a future Queen of England. Um, and you know, I think, I think he understood it, but I think he wanted me to tell him William and Kate both graduated in 2005, with William achieving a Scottish Master of Arts degree with Upper Seconds Class Honours. The news made the front pages around the world. William and Kate began to explore what their lives would be like following university. Prince William's career and his life of duty had been planned ahead, but for Kate, it was no easy task. She joined the English retail chain Jigsaw, but she was distracted, and her focus of attention was quickly pulled away from her professional commitments to the young prince. Following the British royal family's tradition of military training and connection, William undertook his basic army training and later graduated from the prestigious Royal Military Academy Sandhurst for officers. But it wasn't until William's passing out parade that Kate made her first official appearance as his girlfriend. And she could kind of base her entire life around being William's professional girlfriend. I think this kind of thing got her the nickname Waity Katie because a lot of young women felt that she'd really sublimated any uh, life of her own to run around like his lackey. And yet, the job description of William's wife or William's fiance is very much along those lines. And I think, I think Kate was showing the royal family and William that she was ready and willing to, to do what was required of her to fill that role. William's Army and Royal Air Force training began in real earnest. And on his passing out day, a proud Kate was there to see her man get his stripes and show her support. The next chapter in the royal love story was a shock to the British public, with the news that William and Kate had split up in April 2007. I think everybody assumed that Prince William and Kate Middleton were going to get married. They were going to stay together forever. They'd been together for a substantial amount of time. And then when they split, it made you realise just actually they are human beings. They're going through a very public breakup. There was pictures of Prince William cavorting about with some girl in uh, Bournemouth near Bovington where he was um, in the army. And you just thought, Kate Middleton must hate this. And she's got to remain dignified throughout. I don't think then anyone expected them to actually get back together because you thought they'd split up for a reason. So when they did get back together, you knew that it was serious stuff. He certainly thought it was over. He went around saying, well, I'm free. And she said to her friends, it's all over with William. But it's interesting that he then realized, and it must have been him, that he was not going to do better than Kate Middleton. And he rebuilt the bridges between them because it was not something she could do. She had been dumped, essentially. 
and he then came back to her. And I think she said in an interview, um, you learn a lot about yourself. And she had endured it, and it was fairly public, it was known about, but she didn't complain. She didn't run off to the tabloids. She didn't start speaking to her friends knowing that they would be interviewed and their stories would appear. She was very discreet. She was very modest in the true sense of the word, which you don't find very often these days. And in a way, you can say it paid off because she bagged the big one. With the royal romance now back on track, the couple put the short break behind them and started looking to their future together. With the media now speculating that Kate would eventually marry into the royal family, they started making the inevitable comparisons between Kate and Princess Diana. Kate, whether she likes it or not, is going to be compared to Diana in terms of being a fashion icon. I don't think she has got quite the same flair for experimenting as Diana possibly did, but there's no doubt, you know, she's marrying the heir to the throne. So there's all sorts of designers who are going to be desperate for her to be wearing their clothes. I think William will try and do everything he can to make sure that there are no similarities. I mean, what Diana, what we saw with Princess Diana when she married Prince Charles, she just suddenly was thrust into the global sort of spotlight, became one of the most recognised people on the planet. Now, I think that probably is a destiny that awaits Kate, but William's very keen that it will be done on her terms. There are similarities between Kate Middleton and Diana. I mean, the most fundamental one being that they've both chosen to, to opt into one of the most wacky families in Britain. Um, and I, I don't think anyone would tell me off for saying that. Um, being a royal, getting into the goldfish bowl that is the household, my goodness, you'd have to really love the person that asked you to get in there with them. What we know about the engagement was that William whisked Kate off to um, his favourite part of the world, Kenya, where he went when he was on a gap year. Um, took her off, hid the ring in his rucksack and waited for the opportunity to sort of finally, after all these years, pop the question. Now, Kate subsequently said that she wasn't expecting it. <laughs> and you produced a ring? Yeah. There and then? I did, yeah. I'd been carrying it around with me in my rucksack for about three weeks before that, and uh, I literally would not let it go. Everywhere I went, I was keeping hold of it because I knew this thing, if it disappeared, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Um, and yeah, because I planned it, it sort of, it went fine, as you know, you'll hear a lot of horror stories about proposing and things get horribly wrong. It went really, really well, and uh, yeah, I was really pleased that she said yes. So maybe we just ask your reaction to the wedding, please, sir. Obviously, obviously it's thrilled, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Practising for long enough. As you know, Catherine and Prince William have been going out together for quite a number of years, which is great for us because we've got to know William really well. We all think he's wonderful and we're extremely fond of him. They make a lovely couple, they're great fun to be with and we've had a lot of laughs together. We wish them every happiness for the future. One delightful aspect of the engagement was that Prince William gave Kate the ring his mother had been given by Prince Charles at the time of their engagement. And I think it was very telling that he chose to give Kate Middleton his mother's engagement ring. And he said, I want my mother to be part of this, to be present. They're almost willing them to be happy because he particularly has had difficulties in his life, but he's come through them. And, he, and because of his mother's influence on the upbringing, which she made as, as normal as possible, I think he's grown up in an extraordinarily down-to-earth manner. Kate Middleton and Prince William married on the 29th of April, 2011, at Westminster Abbey in London. This is an absolutely extraordinary royal wedding because for the first time in centuries, a future king is going to marry a woman who is neither a member of royalty, a foreign royal house, or British aristocracy. He's going to marry what is called a commoner in this country, an ordinary person. But I don't believe she is an ordinary person. She is probably 
a good example of one of the best things that the royal family has done for years. Youthfully regal. It was modern with a classic twist to it, which was fantastic because I didn't want Kate to sort of lose touch of Kate in the whole pageantry of this occasion. What a fabulous day to be here in London. The entire world is watching. Something like two billion people watch this on television, on the internet, more than any other event, forget royal event, any event in history. Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto her, so long as ye both shall live? Come on. I go. The wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton was one that will go down in British history as a most extraordinary event. It was viewed by billions of people around the world. Given that many British royal marriages have not had their fairy tale endings, William and Kate will be truly determined to make this royal marriage one that will survive and thrive. On the 3rd of December 2012, Clarence House announced that the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge were expecting their first child. However, the announcement did not go according to plan. Obviously, there'd been an awful lot of uh, anticipation of, as when Kate was gonna announce that she was pregnant. I mean, in fact, I think the announcement was uh, suggested for about six months beforehand. Everyone was writing in the papers that she was pregnant. The palace had put out the official announcement as she was en route um, to the hospital uh, because she'd had problems with the pregnancy and it was felt that William and Kate didn't want to even tell the Queen or Prince Charles that she was pregnant until they were absolutely certain everything was okay. The Duchess was admitted to St Mary's Hospital in London in the early stages of labour on the morning of the 22nd of July 2013 and gave birth to a baby boy weighing eight pounds and six ounces at 4.24 p.m. on that same day. Well, actually, I've covered the royal family for 25 years and the excitement around the birth of Prince George has surpassed most of the things I'd covered, actually, even the royal weddings. And uh, it was a huge bun fight, if you like, outside um, the Lindo wing of the St Mary's Hospital Paddington. There were hundreds of journalists there, as well as camera crews and members of the public. Very emotional. Yeah, it's very emotional. It's such a special time. I think any, any parent, I think, will probably sort of um, know what this feeling feels like. So. Very special. They're very much hands-on parents. I mean, William made it very clear um, when George was born that he wanted to be a hands-on parent. He took time off to spend with George and, and Kate. They didn't have a nanny straight away. Um, they were very anti having an extended um, staff to look after their children, look after them. But I think as time has gone on, they've realised they do need that extra help. They can't just rely upon, say, Carol, Kate's mother, uh, and, and other members of the family. They do need that because they're very much in the public eye. Given that Kate Middleton was an outsider coming into the royal family, there is no question that she would have had to have made a good impression on Queen Elizabeth. Her Majesty must have been very keen to ensure that her grandson would find someone with stickability and a devotion to duty as steadfast as her own. Queen Elizabeth is said to be very fond of Kate Middleton. She likes her British sensibility. She likes her uh, middle-class values. She likes that she's close to her family. And Kate has never tried to garner extra attention for herself. There's nothing flashy or showy. Kate toes the company line all the time. And that's something that Queen Elizabeth very much wanted from Diana, which didn't happen. She wanted from Sarah Ferguson, which didn't happen, but has very much so happened with Kate Middleton. There are lots of people who believe Kate is a special favorite of the Queen's because of the way she um, continuously, consistently supports the family, supports William, and never seems to put a step wrong being a duchess, of being a princess. They gave her time and space and resources in order to help and support her in that role, and it's done wonders. 
So, it seems that Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, has the utmost respect for and from the Queen. But how do the British media and the public view Kate? We get the impression, I think, from the media that Kate is very careful, she dresses very conservatively, that she's not going to put a foot wrong. In fact, she'd prefer not to do anything than put a foot wrong, which I do think is probably correct. I personally think that she should be a bit more outgoing, a bit more adventurous, um, and try really to expand her role and her interests. Because if you think at uh, Princess Diana, she had hundreds of charities and organisations that she was patron of and supported. Kate has a, only a handful. I understand that she wants to spend more time with those and more time with her family, but I think it would probably help if she was a bit more flamboyant. Prince William is involved with quite a few charities. Uh, one in particular, he's been involved in AIDS work and AIDS charities since he was very young. And of course that came from a um, deep commitment that his mother Diana had to the cause. William is also involved very much so with a charity called Centerpoint, which is an organization that works to help the homeless. You know, Princess Diana originally kind of got both William and Harry interested in this subject by uh, introducing them and taking them out to meet and talk to homeless people. She always wanted them to see there was another side to their very gilded life in the palace. And since her untimely death. Uh, her, uh, William has uh, continued to be active and involved in Centerpoint. He's even spent the night out on the streets. But William, really, his primary focus um, has been conservation, and particularly the conservation of endangered species. That's one of the most important charities that you see him speaking out on most of the time, saving the elephant, saving the tiger. Uh, and he tries to do it in quite an interesting way as well. He, you know, he's done direct YouTube appeals where he's talking straight down the lens. Um, he makes very passionate speeches um, in quite difficult circumstances sometimes, in places where it's slightly embarrassing to be speaking so publicly against um, countries that have not really done very much to save wildlife. That's his, one of his main um, concerns. He spent a lot of time in his youth in Africa and I think it's certainly the role of his father, Prince Charles, in conservation has had a big impact upon him. It's something he's deeply, deeply passionate about. Some women get morning sickness not until, you know, six or seven weeks in, but Kate seems to get it almost immediately and to a very uh, great degree. So the fact that she was forced to start canceling appearances meant that the palace was forced to confirm uh, the second baby was on the way. On the 2nd of May 2015, at 8.34 a.m. local time, the Duchess gave birth to a daughter who weighed eight pounds and three ounces. <laughs> Their third child, Prince Louis Arthur Charles, was born on the 23rd of April 2018. He remains fifth in the line of succession after his sister, Princess Charlotte. Their relationship grew out of cold winter nights spent in a university digs having spaghetti bolognese and talking about anything other than being a prince or princess. I think Kate and William have a good chance of making this work. They are both very committed to the monarchy and making kind of a, a united front, whatever personal problems they might have. Kate has proven herself to be a team player. She's proven herself to be discreet. She's also proven that she's w willing to put her own interests behind the interests of her husband. Kate and William have begun to take on more royal duties and step up to their responsibilities as senior members of the royal family. The couple's stability and dedication to service has caused them to be likened to Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. Ever since being pictured together for the first time back in 2004 on the snowy slopes of Closters, William and Kate's relationship has been under the public microscope. They have fulfilled their roles and responsibilities with the growing admiration of the British public and beyond. I think when William becomes king, you know, God willing that he does become king, he will be um, 
very much more modern uh, than, than his grandmother or, or his father. And I think he'll be much more the people's king. When you're looking at what William and Kate have in common as a couple, is the fact that they're just really quite well grounded. Well, William and Kate are determined to build a very happy home life for their children. I think that is of paramount importance to both of them. And William seems to be doing a much better job of preparing Kate for royal life than Charles did for his mother. I think um, Diana, Princess of Wales, would certainly have approved of uh, Kate Middleton. I think she would have liked her style. She would have liked the fact that she has stood up for herself in this relationship. She will see her as a very adequate foil for her eldest son. One of the reasons he fell so deeply in love with Kate Middleton was her very British upbringing, her very close family. And William is determined to replicate that as best as he can within the confines and strictures of the palace. They, they both know exactly what they want. And I think there's a real strong element of trust. They've been through a hell of a lot. Their relationship has grown out of being just William and Kate. Um, and I think that that's something that throughout their married life, as much as they can, they will try and retain. They have produced three healthy and happy children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. In their first 40 years, the world has watched them transform from a young couple to role models in the modern monarchy. The task ahead of them is great, and they show every sign of having the character, personality, tenacity and skills to stay with the job, surviving and thriving, whilst keeping alive the values and traditions of the British royal family in the modern world.